Hello, everyone, and welcome to, to this webinar. I hope you all can hear me well. Welcome to the HPC Big Data, IoT, and AI Future Industry Driven Collaborative Strategic Topics. I think the title of our workshop uh, really is quite self described. So, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, all the organizers, the speakers, and of course, all the participants. I will quickly introduce myself. I'm Ana Garcia, and uh, I'm the Secretary General of the Big Data Value Association. And this workshop has been organized uh, in collaboration with ETP for HPC. So, just a few practical things. Uh, so, this is not a, a normal webinar, it's a workshop. So, we will have quite a lot of um, speakers, presenters, and there will be discussions. For the audience who cannot uh, speak, so, to, uh, so you, you are not, uh, you don't have your microphones uh, activated, uh, there is the possibility to put some questions and answers for the for the speakers. So um, if you don't see the control panel on the right side of your screen, you will probably see a button with an arrow, and you need to click the arrow, and then you will be able to see the control panel and uh, ask questions um, on the way. So saying this, uh, I would like to uh, welcome the, the main moderators and also organizers of this workshop, uh, Maria Perez and Michael Mann. So just a few words. Uh, so Maria is full professor at the Polytechnic University of Madrid. She's also a member of the board of directors of, of BTVA and is one of the official representatives of BTVA in the EuroHPC uh, Research and Innovation um, Advisory Group and also is leading the task force in BDBA and related to HPC and big data. And then I would like to also welcome Michael Manns and really thank him for, for being with us today. He's a, a, an expert at uh, IBM Research and a project manager of ETP for HPC and he's in charge among other things of uh, um, developing with many colleagues the strategic research uh, agenda. So welcome to you both and uh, now uh, Maria, Michael, the, the floor is yours. Okay, so thank you, Anna, for your presentation and thanks to all of you for coming and joining this workshop. As Anna mentioned, this workshop was hosted by BDBA in collaboration with the European Commission, ATP for SPC and other associations. So um, originally, this workshop was uh, meant to be a face-to-face -face session in the uh, Euro SPC week last March in Porto. But unfortunately, due to the COVID situation, we, we have to cancel that event and we have to reschedule online. So I hope you will find it interesting and you get the insights of this workshop as, as you expected. So um, can you hear the presentation? Yes. No. So, um, well, what, what is the main objective of this workshop? So as you probably know, uh, there are some large-scale pilots that are being developed in the context of the ICT-11 call. This is the call related to HPC and big data large-scale test web application, and particularly two different calls, one more related to the combi combination and adaptation of relevant technologies, HPC Big Data Cloud, ICT-11A, and the other, ICT-11B, that is uh, also related to this combination, but also taking advantage of other technologies like IoT, edge computing, and all these technologies that are relevant in the digital continuum. So uh, our idea in this uh, workshop is to try to analyze the challenge, limitation, and perspective of, of, of all these large-scale pilots. And we will be happy if, uh, as a result of this workshop, we have or we obtain relevant future research and innovation activities that we can uh, do in both the EuroSPC joint undertaking, in which uh, both BDBA and ATP for SPC uh, are present, and also the new AI data and robotics partnership, uh, and of course supporting aligning in between both partnerships. Um, well, the core of, of, of the workshop is of course these kind of projects. We have two different kind of projects, ICT-11A and ICT-11B, as, as I previously mentioned. So the first ones have been running for more or less one year and a half, a little less, and the others, ICT-11B, for nine months, more or less. So um, 
we had difference uh, at this uh, uh, at this aspect, but but well, anyway, we are going to uh, introduce the different projects in the first set of uh, projects. ICT 11A, we have Deep Health, Deep Learning, and HPC to boost biomedical applications for health. And uh, sorry, um, the next one is going to be Cybil, fostering precision agriculture and livestock farming through secure access to large-scale SPC enable virtual industrial experimentation environment empowering scalable big data analytics, long title. Uh, then Lexix, large-scale execution for industry and society. And finally, Evolve, SPC and cloud, and cloud enhanced testbed for extracting value from diverse data at large scale. Unfortunately, the speakers of Evolve are not present in this workshop, but anyway, is one of the projects that are part of this set of projects. In, in the other part of the project, we have IO Twins, distributed digital twins for industrial semis, a big data platform, and Infinite Edge, tailored IoT and big data sandboxes and testbeds for smart, autonomous, and personalized services in the European finance and insurance services ecosystem. So, thanks to all of the speakers of these projects, uh, here in this slide, you can find the schedule of the workshop. After this first slot with the introduction, we are going directly, directly to the presentation of the first set of projects, the ICT 11A projects. And on behalf of DICEL, we have Monica Caballero and John Ander. On behalf of Cyber Project, Stephen Davy and Sofia Karagiorgiu. And on behalf of the Lessis Project, we have Jan Martinovic, Mar Lebrier, and Stephen Hackinger. Just after this first set of Project's presentation. We are going to uh, have a panel discussion. So the idea is that all of us, all the project speakers, and moderated by Michael and me, we can have some kind of discussion related to the challenges, limitations, and perspectives uh, in in terms of the main uh, fields and main research challenges of of these projects. And after that, we are going to present the the other project, the other set of projects, the ICT 11B. On behalf of IO Twins, we have Paolo Bellavista and Francesco Milo. And on behalf of Infinite Edge, we have Ernesto Troyano. And exactly again, again, as in the previous um, panel discussion, we will have another second round of discussion in which we, again, we can discuss these research challenges, uh, completing the discussion that we have before. Finally, we will provide some closing remarks and, um, well, and, and we finish uh, our workshop. So um, this is uh, in principle the agenda. Of course, if we need a little more of time, at least from our side, we can stay longer. Uh, but anyway, we will try to go also to, to keep the times more or less like, like in the agenda. So Michael, I don't know if, if you want to include something else. So yes maybe one comment uh, maria so um we are currently as as a combination of etp and bdva <clears throat> we're jointly working on providing input for the um, work program 2021 to 23 to euro hpc as you know euro hpc is a joint undertaking uh, and uh, is partially focusing on procurement but also on RNI activities um, in the area of um, high performance computing and uh, high performance data analytics. Uh, so, the perfect intersection of um, disciplines that are also presented here. <clears throat> and um, I think this workshop today is extremely interesting because, at least, I would like to understand um, whether there are um, topics and challenges expressed by the teams that could lead to um, a suggestion for upcoming um, work programs. So learning from the teams to understand where are the challenges and, um, and what can we do um, in the next go around of um, projects is uh, very important to us. Okay. Okay, thank you, Michael. So, Anna, I don't know if you want to do something or, or we can go directly to the presentation. Uh, yeah. before, we start, before we start with the 
So um, I'm launching just a very quick uh, poll for the participants. So we can, uh, so we have quite a large audience. So if you can uh, dedicate a few seconds to let us know uh, whether you are working more in academia or research or industry or where, and uh, uh, then we all will see the results. So please, I, I leave uh, these 10 more seconds. Okay. Okay, I close the poll now. And then we will see the results in a moment. So this is for you to see the from the participants, all the attendees. You can see the different distribution of, um, of profiles. And then I'm gonna launch a second one. a bit more related to the different areas of expertise. And you can select different um, areas. Okay, 10, 15 more seconds. Okay, I think it's sufficient. We close the poll and we share the results. So here you can see also, I think we have a very, very well balanced distribution of different uh, disciplines and knowledge and expertise. So this is very good. And of course, as people could mark different options, um, we have the percentages are, are diverse. Okay, Maria, this is all from my side. So you can already, um, introduce the first the speakers or, or uh, okay yeah so we can go directly to the first uh, presentation so it's uh, by monica caballero and john under monica caballero from everest and john under from universidad politécnica de valencia so um, you can start when, when you can so i suppose anna okay great Hello, can you see my screen? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can do it. Yes, still with a very nice picture. Now, yes, the slides are now there. <laughs> okay. Yes, hello. So, hello and uh, thank you, Maria and, and Anna. And good afternoon to everyone. I'm Monica Caballero. I'm uh, from Everest, as Maria introduced, and I'm the project coordinator of the Deep Health Project. Within this uh, talk today, I will provide you some introduction to the project and John Ander, which, uh, who is the technical manager of the project, will talk to you about the current status of the project and the challenges we identify so far. So next, John. To start with, let me provide you a little bit of context of the challenges we identify when designing the project. The health is focused on the healthcare sector, which is a a key sector on the economy and an impact in the sector benefits not only the economy but also the society. And we realize that the, the systems, the public health systems, are generating a large quantity of, of data, specifically uh, biomedical images, which are not fully exploited, since most of the value of these images come from the interpretation that it's normally done manually by, by experts. On the other hand, we identify that technologies such as AI, deep learning, and uh, computing capabilities of HPC can provide a real uh, advantage to abandon, to exploit, to exploit the, the knowledge contained in this, in this data. Um, but there are challenges. There is a need of uh, a lot of knowledge on the variety of tools and highly skills on AI. The, those processes to create and use predictive models are expensive in terms of time and, and resources. And also, the not only having data, but having uh, high quality data is it's very important. So if you go to the next, um, John, I, I will put this into a, a graphical, in a graphical way. This is the scenario uh, where we define the project. 
uh, in as those are scenarios where image processing and the use of predictive models is used to support diagnosis. So in the left hand, we have the production environment where we have the doctors and medical professionals who ingest data, images scanned, and, and get some uh, into some biomedical applications, software platforms, and get uh, from it some clues to support the diagnosis, being a prediction, a segmentation, analysis of the image. Those doctors also in charge of annotating and making this data useful to train more predictive models. And this will go to the right side of the image where we have the training environment. And, and there we have uh, the ICT experts, which are the ones that need to process the images, set up the, 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 the images that the sets, and have the knowledge of a variety immediate uh, of current available tools, libraries, in order to train and, and, and the best suitable models for uh, the, the application in hand and ingest into the biomedical application. So this is the current scenario. And in this scenario, the, the main goal of the Deep Health project, go, John, if you can go to the next, please. Thank you. So the main goal is to put uh, the HPC computing power, the service of these biomedical applications that use predictive models based on, on large and complex image data sets. And in this way, allow to new or, or more efficient ways for diagnosing, treatment and monitoring of, of diseases. In other words, we want to, to ease and increase the productivity of both the medical professionals, provide them more support, and for the IT professionals, in order to train these predictive models. Um, and from a more development point of view, what we want to offer is a unifying framework. So in order to allow to train these predictive models, exploiting the available heterogeneous hybrid HPC and cloud architectures that are currently available. So some key facts about the project. It's a three-year project that started last January. Uh, with more than 40 million thousand euros and we are a consortium of 22 partners from nine countries covering both um, health organizations, research organizations and large and as uh, large industries and also SMEs. Uh, let me talk about the, the expected results and the, the developments. So John, thanks. The first main result we are working on is the Deep Health Toolkit which is a free and open source software that is composed of two libraries. The EDDL focuses on uh, the deep learning aspects and the ECDL focuses on computer vision aspects for the front end that will use the, the, the use of these libraries. Those libraries will be ready to, to be run on hybrid HPC and cloud architectures and easy to integrate into software applications or biomedical platforms. Um, the uh, second big result is uh, an HPC infrastructure that will support the efficient um, training, the efficient uh, running of, of these algorithms. And we will integrate these uh, libraries into seven biomedical and AI software platforms, uh, some, some of them coming from industry to test and, and validate the easiness to, to integrate these libraries into any other application. And since these are large uh, scale pilots, we will validate all of our proposals into 14 use cases covering three main areas. Finally, regarding all the aspects uh, to data, we are proposing a structure for data lakes for the um, for anonymized and pseudonymized data. So translating this into the scenario I was uh, showing you before, what we are doing is substituting uh, all the variety of uh, tools available by a deep health toolkit and uh, supported by an HPC infrastructure that will allow to reduce the time or first of all to you to ease the training of predictive models and reduce the time to do it. So after this introduction I will let John explain you more about the current situation and the challenges. So thank you John. Thank you Monica. Well this is John. Uh, I am associate professor in the Technical University of Valencia. The acronym is UPV. I am also the technical manager of this project. I am trying to summarize uh, the current status at the current month of the project and also the, the challenge we identified during this, during this month. Okay. Well, so far, uh, 
in the first phase or first half a year of the project, we design and uh, define the specification of the APIs, APIs of the libraries and also how uh, the HPC system who should be used uh, for training and also for inferencing and the use cases were uh, completed and were related to some of the platforms in order to use uh, or to apply the platforms in some of the use cases. As Monica said uh, in last words, uh, uh, definition of the structure for anonymized and pseudonymized data, lake, data lakes is in progress. Okay, the idea is that some of the use cases can use this data, this is hierarchy or this structure of, of uh, for organizing a data set can be used in some of the data sets related to the use cases of the project. Well, the Deep Health Toolkit, uh, practically it has been said by Monica. Uh, you can see here that we have two URL, URLs which where you can find available the current status of the of both libraries and also the front end and other uh, related developments in within the Deep Health project. Uh, just to mention that the work in progress is improving non-distributed version, uh, developing a Python wrapper, which is practically developed because the libraries, in particular the deep learning libraries, is written in C++. Uh, the distributed version, we will have several distributed versions. One is using comms uh, from Barcelona Supercomputing Center that currently already runs on hybrid HPC and cloud architectures, but needs uh, improvements during the project and also to test using the data sets of different of the use cases of the project. Also our purpose is to to port some of the most important kernels in the uh, in the internal computation for training deep networks to FPGAs in order to get a good balance between a, a, a performance and energy consumption. And finally, the front end is practically finished, and also uh, the front end is what the user sees. But there is a supporting backend to load and transport images on the fly during the training. Okay. Well, uh, regarding HPC infrastructure adaptation, I have to run fast. So just to say that we, we are developing all for running in CPUs, different kind of CPUs, but mainly Intel CPUs, also with GPUs, NVIDIA GPUs and still pending to finish or to complete the portability to FPGAs and maybe, why not, other, other uh, computer or microprocessor architectures, okay? Uh, I, I already said that uh, the portability or the test, the first test with comms is already running and practically it will be better if I move to the, to the other, to the, to the challenges because we have, we are hurry, okay? Important to say that, uh, uh, libraries are integrated are being integrated in the platforms in the seven platforms uh, provided by seven of the partners uh, mentioned previously by Monica and the integration is in progress which is an iterative process of of uh, continuous improving improvement okay and we will test uh, pilots with this this task uh, or this work the work package uh, related to test uh, and validate the developing in in this project has been uh, has been started uh, this month no, the, in, in April, sorry. And uh, we can see a first attempt in this uh, in this URL on GitHub about how to combine the both libraries in order to to train to train uh, deep neural networks. Okay. Well, we identified five uh, challenges: uh, need of faster communication networks, availability of uh, of quality and interoperable data data security and anonymization, which are related, but not exactly the same, automated end-to-end -end AI and machine learning analytic pipelines. And uh, we think we have to engage more the domain application experts in the loop of uh, this kind of projects and other kind of projects in general, okay? Well, in order to go faster related to this challenge, I will to mention that it, uh, it is uh, it is uh, uh, not, uh, widely known uh, the distributed training of uh, the distributed training algorithms need to move uh, the model parameters between master node and worker nodes. Uh, the problem is that 
sometimes or in many in many cases we need to move these uh, these parameters too frequently so we have the problem of move large amount of data too frequently so uh, if any improvement in the the speed of communication will be will be welcome for this kind of project that will be have a, 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 an important impact okay nevertheless we have also to to do a little or do a lot of research in order to find algorithmic strategies in order to make more asynchronous the distributed training in order to minimize data transfer requirements but it is so difficult well the second challenge availability of quality and interoperable data well I want to focus in that we need homogeneously annotated and validated data coming from different hospitals across Europe. It's very important to to boost the the, the, the research and innovation in 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 AI when applied to the health sector, and also interoperability. We need to merge uh, several data sets coming from different sources in order to uh, work with them together to train uh, more robust uh, AI-based models. We need that this uh, uh, data set should be interoperable in the sense that they can be merged in a uh, few hours i mean uh, without practically any effort from it experts okay the problem is that currently we have a lot of data or there is a lot of data available which, which is not compatible okay and do we have data yes but uh, not quality data i mean not all data available is properly labeled label because doing the annotation is a time consuming task. So this is one uh, thing we have to have in mind. Well, regard, regarding future challenge, uh, side the, as the slides will be available to all of you, I think I can move to the next one because if not, it will be difficult. It will be difficult to, to fit in 10 minutes, okay? But it's important to me to highlight that uh, we think a law must protect doctors in order that make to make them feel confident when they participate in projects from which pseudonymized data sets will be made publicly available for research. So the responsibility will be in a ethical and technical committees, not on, on, on doctors. Well, uh, impact, of course, having larger data sets will lead to more robust AI and ML models. And concrete actions, I think I can ask any question related to this later, but I have to move to the next one, okay? Well, regarding data security and anonymization, uh, we all know that health data is very sensitive data. So the most important thing is that no patient information should be disclosed when we use data uh, uh, in order to train models. So Currently, anonymization, pseudonymization, and the identification techniques are being developed. Also, other uh, training strategies like federated or split learning in order to use data where it is instead of uh, moving data to, to computing centers. But this is also too challenging, this. And uh, as a future challenge, I, we would like to, to, to highlight this one. New training strategies to handle sensitive data on the age. I mean, besides what I said before, uh, use the data without uh, uh, moving data from the hospital where it was uh, collected, where uh, the hospital that holds the data. Uh, we have to move computing capacity to that part, following the idea of edge computing, and then federated learning or split learning can train uh, AI-based models using data which is in different uh, locations across Europe, okay? Well, uh, concrete actions, and then I think I have to move to the next one. Challenge four, well, computer en en engineers, agents, scientists working in the health sector do not need and might not have, have a deep knowledge in the field of artificial intelligence machine learning or deep learning techniques for the daily work they need to train models based on uh, or extracted from a particular model so which is has been agreed by by expert in the deep health deep health area and then they can 
use such models to train that models uh, for using the, the data they have. So the idea is to provide them with intuitive software platforms in order that they can train AI, ML, DL models and put the trained models after testing them, of course, in production without having to develop a toolkit based on, on deep learning. The idea is that people that has a, a not deep, non deep uh, knowledge on artificial intelligence can use this kind of tools for uh, achieving the purpose of uh, training models to be used in the in the loop of making decisions for diagnosis and, and following the evolution of patients, etc. Okay. Well, it's regarding the state of the art. Just this topic is uh, one of the main uh, goals of this project to develop automated end-to-end -end, uh, AI and ML analytic pipelines using also a, a high performance and cloud uh, infrastructure or architectures available. Okay, in a transparent way for the expert user working in the health sector. In the health sector. Well, future challenges. I think one of the we have to have in mind is to keep European competitiveness in this area. Okay. And also another challenge which is important for us is to increase the acceptance of professionals in our particular case, uh, doctors, in order to apply this kind of models uh, and the output, the outcomes of this kind of projects in the in the loop. In, uh, related to impact, of, of course, increase the productivity of computer scientists working in the health sector, which are not experts in, in deep learning, okay? Or in other sectors, not specifically in the health sector, okay? Well, uh, the last challenge for us, which is also important, is to put domain application experts in the loop, because domain application experts are key for developing AI models and AB solutions because they will be who uh, can uh, tell us the specification and the requirements and what are their needs and they will be the users. Without them, our work has no sense practically. Okay, so collecting quality data needs the effort of such domain experts in any domain, not only in the health sector, which is the, 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 the sector related to this project or to the, exactly to the to the difficult project and usefulness and trust in the AI based application depend on the real involvement of these experts in the design phase. They must be more active actors in this kind of projects. Sometimes they say, we, we don't have knowledge about technology. We have no deep knowledge about technology. And then uh, the attitude usually is to, it's not, they are not too much involved and we have to change this. I don't know how. It's difficult, it's difficult, okay? Well, uh, currently what happens? Usually in particular doctor, but all, all domain application experts are too busy to participate in additional tasks or to change the current way of working, okay? They usually are, uh, has an, an inertia and they usually, they don't uh, make an opposition to that, but uh, practically, is difficult to, to, to dialogue between them and the technical profiles. And both technical or IT experts and domain application experts must to do the exercise of approach with one each other, one collective to each other. Okay. Well, challenges. Of course, data notation and quality data, thanks to them, is when we can have this kind of data. Okay. Large data sets of quality data, which is what we need to to train more robust models. And bring the mind uh, uh, an easy tier first closer, okay, which I said before, to, to make them to dialogue in a closer way. Finally, availability of quality data. We know that we are recurrent with this idea. We know that we are recurrent, but quality data is crucial for uh, the success of AI-based solutions, okay? And uh, finally, I want to, to comment that uh, in the new calls, it is important that the balance between ICT and domain specific ex as experts in project calls to attract domain experts is important. That uh, this, how to say it, 
this idea, this and the underwriting idea must be in some of the calls. Okay, and th thank for all. This is all from our side. Thank you, John. Thank you, Monica, for the nice presentation. So I have a question regarding the the, the last as aspect you mentioned related to the domain uh, experts in the loop. So when you talk about the dialogue between expert domain and technical profiles, it is still complex. It's more from the point of view of the HPC field or more from the point of view of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on. So what do you consider that is more the gap between the technical uh, profile and the spare domain in this case, in, in this project? Well, uh, it's my personal experience and it is not a critic for, for doctors, but usually uh, mm, for them, Mm, the technology is is uh, uh, far from his domain of uh, of knowledge, and then uh, sometimes they don't understand which is the how how the technology can help them in their daily work. And because of that, I have. This, but this is an uh, 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 more an opinion than. And, uh, and, and it's a, a feeling they become like disconnected from the group. They are still with us, working with us, attending what we said, but it's like they are disconnected. So I think that the, it is very important that should be, uh, I don't know how to, to implement this, uh, to achieve that uh, uh, doctors uh, thinks that the specification on the requirements of the a particular call uh, mention them mention these details explicitly make them more involved we need they to be more involved in in the project they have to to do like a, a how to say the 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 effort not too much effort but the effort of read more about technology and to be closer to the technology because if not Sometimes we cannot explain some ideas or some uh, uh, task, uh, how to do the work for a particular task if we don't use technical language. So I think we need that they uh, do an approach to, to the IT. Of course, we have to, uh, to do the approach to the, to the application domain, but mm, maybe smart. Mm, my particular view, but usually we, the, the, the IT people, despite we use a technical language that could be seen as a complex language from the point of view of doctors, we do a, an approach, an important approach. When we work with images, uh, we get practical insight in order to know what they, how they detect that in such an image uh, or in a particular image, uh, they see a cancer or not a cancer or et cetera. So this kind of approach, I think we do that. This we do this approach, but in the other sense, they have to do an effort. But it's difficult because the daily work is too too demanding. They have no time. I recognize that the, it's difficult. It's an important effort for them. Okay. Uh, this is Michael. Um, <clears throat> I have a question in the same area since my brother is a radiologist, and I think he's he will be very interested as we have been discussing uh, opportunities in this area in the past. So, but I would assume that the doctors even, I don't know how many doctors you have as uh, in, in your project, but I would assume that uh, there is a big inhibitor in making them really helpful because of the fact that the data that they could ingest into the project are all uh, personalized data and, and they have to be nominalized um, first and and the trust for the project maybe to handle the data correctly is not there. How would you answer this question or this issue? Oof. This issue is very, very difficult because um, we find, as you said, a personal information from patients in, in some uh, X-ray images or uh, uh, CT scans or, or magnetic resonance images. And also in the structural reports they write, uh, sometimes they include the, the details of, about the patients that we think, from our point of view, that this could be avoided. So following some guidelines, define it and protocols, 
I think data could be gathered in or collected in such a way that it is practically anonymized <laughs> since it was collected. And this is an effort they have to do. They have to be uh, to be aware of this, the, the, uh, this, this, the, of this, the importance of this. And also, we need they to be aware of the importance of uh, do a, a correct annotation from from the since the beginning. I mean, uh, as as uh, they have new scans related to a patient, with a little more effort, they can leave these images correctly labeled, and they will be correctly labeled for always. Mm. This is what is shown in this slide. They they have to do this work, but not as an additional work when they finish their daily work. They, they review the images. No, no. They have to change like a, a, a little bit the way of working so that with a, a little bit of more effort, they can leave images already ready practically for training, for training mm -hmm. models. This is an mm -hmm. effort, I think. It, it, uh, I, I found uh, two, like two, teams, two teams. One team, which is, uh, which is the doctor that are aware of that and do that perfectly, but others that uh, they don't understand how to do that and they don't understand the, the, the relevance of this. Sorry, I don't want to extend much more. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you, Monica, for the... Well, someone in the audience comments, and, and I completely agree, that Rolf Findesen, so he said that the, he needs to be a two-site action is, is referred to the previous um, question. So he thinks that it needs to be a two-sided action. It's also the computer scientists and engineers how need to lean towards the medical question. So there needs to be an interface from both sides. And, and I completely agree with, with mm -hmm. him. But any is for commenting in the, the previous question. So thank you very much. And we, we can go now to the next presentation. So the Cybel project, Stephen Davy and, and Sofia Karajorju. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi Maria. <laughs> so thanks for inviting us here. Um, like thanks to uh, Maria and uh, the BDVA. Um, also very interesting to hear about the uh, Deep Health project there. Um, so uh, the Cybel project is another project that was funded under the, the ICT-11 uh, topic. Um, so my name is, is Dr. Stephen Davey. I'm the coordinator of the Cybel project. Um, it's a uh, three, uh, 36 months project. Uh, there's 31 partners in 14 countries. Uh, it's a 14 million euro budget. Um, there's nine demonstrators in the project. Um, and it started on the 1st of January 2019. Uh, it's very much in the area of precision agri, uh, precision livestock farming. Um, but we have, you know, we have somewhat of an overlap between the challenges that um, the Deep Health Project and, and likewise some of the other projects in ICT-11 would have. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just give you a, a brief idea of, you know, from a high level, some of the main challenges of the project. Uh, and then I'll pass over to my colleague, Sophia, who will go into a little bit more detail on, on some of the technical challenges there. Uh, so if you're looking, you know, in general, what is the really, really large um, challenge that the project is looking at? And it's, it's looking at the whole area of food waste um, and just, just the, the production of food uh, in general. So some people might have, might have know, seen some of these statistics from um, uh, the, the World Food Organization that a third of food that's produced globally ends up in the landfill. And that's just an, an unacceptable situation for, for lots of different reasons, both societally and environmentally and, and economically. Um, so the Cybel project, it isn't looking to, 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 uh, to solve the whole aspect of it because it's, it's, it's quite a large problem. Um, but we're gonna be looking at it in a, in, in a particular area, which is around assisting agriculture and assisting farmers, whether they're, they're crop farmers or livestock farmers, into producing higher quality um, and just more informed uh, information in their production processes. And, and that's what we hope is that it's going to have an impact on uh, food waste in, in particular. So how do we do that? So uh, if you're looking at in the agricultural area, what are the, 
they're trying to do to uh, to improve the situation around food waste and, and food safety as well. Uh, so there's a digital transformation in the area of agriculture right now. So what does digital transformation in agriculture mean? It means that there's going to be a lot of technologies and information systems out there that are going to help uh, farmers and farm consultants to make decisions around when to harvest, when to feed their, their animals, um, you know, which part of the, the crop should they should they harvest first. Um, so they're going to have a lot of this data at their fingertips, uh, which is, isn't necessarily the situation today. Um, Getting access to this data and getting you know really fine fine grained uh, decisions that they can make on, on on their production data, it's really what we're all trying to do when, when we're talking about uh, digital transformation in in agriculture. So uh, a lot of what what's going to be behind this and and what's going to facilitate this is going to be um, big data, artificial intelligence, uh, Internet of Things. So it's going to be collecting data from the farm. It's going to be pushing it up into the cloud. It's going to be running uh, machine learning and artificial algorithms across all this data, and then making sense and sense of it all, and, and delivering those results back to um, farmers or farm consultants. Uh, but one of the, the main inhibitors that we find in this project is that there's still quite a difficult um, difficulty and challenges in. Uh, having these farm consultants and farmers to get access to high performance computing and these high, high performance computing are required to run and to train uh, artificial intelligent algorithms that are going to make sense of this data. So one of the main challenges that we have that we see in this project is just that HPC high performance computing is just, just not accessible to most people um, uh, and particularly most in the, in the agricultural sector. And if we're just to break that down into a few different types of areas um, where we see it's, it's not accessible. Um, so we might have a lack of expertise in big data and, and data mining, as particularly in, in, in that those stakeholder group. Uh, there would be a difficulty in AI machine learning coming up with those types of models that they would need to, to be able to um, create. Uh, it's difficulty in, in accessing and, and being able to process large volumes of IoT sensor data. Um, and then the capability of being able to, uh, you know, write these algorithms that are be able to be processed on high performance computing. So that that scale of, you know, transforming the algorithm so it can be run across a very large uh, high performance computer center. So the project is going to be looking at at, at those kind of challenges uh, in particular. So if we were to look at, you know, some of the benefits that we would get. Um, by delivering on this, and this is how we get to potentially uh, have an impact on food waste. If we look at um, the farming sector, if they have uh, all this data at their fingertips on, on the, the weather, soil temperatures, potentially sea conditions if they're, if they're aquaculture farmers, um, looking at pollen counts. So there's lots and lots of data there. We're able to process it for them. They'll be able to, you know, particularly if you're looking at crop farmers, it potentially classify crop into into different sectors, uh, so you to be able to look at their farm and see what's where's the high quality grain or where's the medium quality grain or where should they harvest first. They'll be able to get really detailed fertilization plans. If you're looking at in the pig farming uh, sector, they'll be able to get notifications on you know the live weight of pigs, uh, looking at uh, what's the quality of the of the health of those pigs. Um, and and you know, one of the other situ scenarios we have is around uh, in aquaculture. So to be able to get information on fish activity, if they're, if they're fishing out in the open sea, um, where is the best uh, direction to send their trawlers? So to be able to get these um, really high quality informed decisions. And then that should lead to improved outcomes for those sectors. So better food quality, um, longer shelf life, higher yield from their products, uh, they would be able to differentiate their products better and also be able to open up new markets for, for, for their, their products. And the combination of all these would lead to uh, less food waste through higher production, um, better quality production uh, and longer shelf life. So there's some, some of the ambitions of the project. Uh, in particular, how, how we're going to deliver on these is just looking at uh, three kind of very high level technical um, outcomes of the project, um, looking at HPC abstraction, so build, make, making uh, you know UI systems 
uh, and tools that would make high performance computing systems much more accessible. So it's not just command line driven. We have systems there that will be able to um, ingest data, um, be able to uh, define what kind of algorithms you want, and to be able to, you know, eventually produce uh, solutions that will be get to the market faster. Uh, we're also looking at AI and, and ML templates. So that's around being able to take off the shelf um, AI and ML templates and be able to adapt them quite easily to suit the type of uh, application that you want to deliver on. Uh, and also uh, we're looking at intelligent query uh, building as well. So this is to be able to get much more deeper insights into the large volumes of data that you have and to be able to expose some previous hidden meaning behind those data. Uh, and those tools in combination, we're going to be leveraging across nine of our um, demonstrators uh, that are going to be in the project. So the demonstrators fall into two kind of large categories, uh, one on precision agriculture and the other in precision livestock farming. In precision agriculture, we're looking at uh, soybean yield and protein prediction. And that's very much being driven by satellite imagery and, and drone, drone imagery as well, to be able to classify uh, the soybean crop into, into high quality versus medium quality. Very similar kind of uh, prediction models, we're looking into grape and organic food production. Uh, in those situations, we're taking in satellite data, but also weather predictions. Uh, and we're looking at, uh, eventually looking at crop yield forecasting as well for those areas. In the precision livestock farming area, um, we have two pig farming uh, use cases. One is looking at the welfare of, of pigs, and the other one is looking at uh, pig behavior analysis. Uh, we also have two in the aquaculture area as well. So we have open sea fishing, so it's it's trying to plan the routes of um, uh, fishing trawlers, and the, the, there's aquaculture monitoring and feeding. So we're looking at uh, feeding um, uh, optimizations in the Mediterranean. And just to give you a, a, a flavor of, of one of the, the interesting use cases we have here, it's pig video analysis. So we're in a typical pig farm where you might have uh, five or six or 700 pigs. Um, you'd only have maybe four or five workers uh, and all of their jobs would be, as, as in part would be to look at the, after the welfare of pigs and also the pig behavior. So what we're looking at is in one of the use cases is developing AI algorithms that will take computer vision or, or a, a computer feed, vision feed of the pig behavior and to be able to identify issues of um, you know uh, deteriorating behavior of, of pigs and have that alerted to pig managers. Um, so then they'll be able to manage their farms in a lot more opti opti optimal way. Um, so that's just to give you a, a, you know, a high level overview of um, the Cybele project from, from kind of a, a motivation perspective. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'll pass over to Sophia, where she'll look at a bit more of the, the challenges involved in the project uh, and some of the progress that we've been making to date. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Give me a couple of seconds to take the control of my screen. I hope you can see all uh, my screen. Um, this is uh, Sofia Karajorgu. Um, I'm heading the distributed machine learning uh, unit uh, at UBTEC and I'm also affiliated as a visiting professor at the Harokopir University of Athens. Um, the axis uh, that I would like to cover today uh, resolves around uh, some societal challenges coming from the Sibele context uh, and some uh, technical challenges uh, following um, uh, afterwards. Um, from the societal perspective, um, one third of the food that is produced is lost or uh, wasted. Um, uh, this loss uh, uh, is coming uh, due to inefficiencies in planting, harvesting, uh, feeding, uh, water use, uh, extreme weather conditions and uh, climate change. So um, diverse domains uh, arise uh, bringing uh, and uh, pressing uh, um, uh, the agriculture and the livestock um, uh, fields. 
uh, and uh, the global uh, food uh, waste uh, um, is uh, has been computed uh, um, uh, around to one billion in a, a year and uh, the uh, important aspect is uh, that also contributes in a carbon footprint uh, 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 and that the global greenhouse uh, gas emission. Uh, however, uh, provided uh, this uh, scene, at the same time, uh, we need uh, to have uh, more and uh, better quality uh, food and uh, we need to have uh, mechanisms actually to, um, to monitor and uh, uh, ensure uh, food safety at several uh, spaces. From the technical uh, perspective uh, of the Sibel uh, uh, project, um, large volumes of data request uh, diverse uh, modalities uh, uh, from uh, uh, the farming environments uh, to the livestock environments uh, to the aquaculture env uh, environments uh, requiring uh, um, different uh, data collection, um, data cleaning and uh, provenance uh, processing and analysis uh, capabilities. Um, uh, as a next step, uh, provided that uh, um, uh, this uh, data onboarding um, has been achieved uh, efficiently, when data converge uh, at the testbed, uh, uh, further require efficient and distributed data services uh, for anonymization, for enrichment, uh, for uh, computing. Um, and uh, when they come uh, to, to be analyzed, uh, complex and dynamic uh, workflows uh, need intelligent uh, mechanisms, uh, uh, bridging the big data and HPC worlds and making these worlds more available to the end uh, users, including um, uh, data scientists, operators, uh, uh, near to the farmers and the livestock uh, infrastructures, um, a, a chain which is uh, complex for the ones uh, who cannot uh, intercept uh, technology uh, at a large scale. And at the end, uh, uh, this uh, voluminous uh, analysis results require adaptable and non-blocking visualization services, especially when combined with uh, uh, georeferenced uh, images and uh, uh, complex uh, uh, analysis uh, results uh, requiring overlaying uh, um, different layers. Uh, the current status of Sibele uh, project uh, is that uh, most of uh, the tasks uh, are in progress uh, in, in, in good progress and um, uh, we, we um, can harvest huge amounts of uh, images, uh, time series and textual data to deliver uh, AI fuel generic and domain specific uh, uh, data analytic applications uh, as already mentioned by Steve. Um, uh, we have set up uh, uh, four uh, test beds uh, uh, combining HPC and uh, big data functionalities with parallel and distributed computing capabilities. And uh, uh, that uh, was one of uh, um, core uh, challenges that um, we are facing in the course of the uh, uh, project, bridging uh, both worlds. Um, um, Another aspect in the area of uh, big data is that uh, uh, algorithms uh, to uh, cover the uh, agriculture and uh, livestock uh, um, are working uh, with uh, the demonstrator and the pilot uh, partners and the end users uh, to uh, acquire uh, requirements and um, support distributed machine learning and uh, deep learning uh, methods. Um, the other thing is that uh, we have created for use uh, some common repositories uh, with uh, trained uh, models uh, in order to be easily onboarded and uh, deployed. Uh, also, uh, elaborating on uh, um, uh, helping uh, end users and uh, uh, people who are not uh, aware of uh, uh, technology specificities uh, to uh, easily use and onboard uh, such complex uh, models. 
We also deliver an abstraction layer translating application level configuration directly to HPC big data uh, workloads at the Sibele test pits. And uh, um, uh, the, the upper, uh, uh, let's say, perspective is uh, to uh, bring, uh, to create value and uh, generate innovation uh, in, for the end the users, mainly coming from the precision agriculture and the livestock. The key topics for uh, current and future uh, research and uh, innovation uh, is coming from the infrastructure management and uh, uh, is associated with uh, the seamless HPC uh, resource management over diverse uh, frameworks and uh, test pits. This is considered quite challenging uh, because uh, um, the target environments uh, uh, may vary uh, by means of uh, operating systems and bare metal uh, uh, specificities. So uh, the abstraction is not considered uh, an easy task. Another aspect is uh, the HPC big data co-location, exploiting uh, resource managers for the, from the HPC world and the resource management from the big data uh, world. And uh, the idea here is actually to provide uh, uh, seamless application execution independently from uh, what is the underlying uh, um, uh, environment, uh, bridging uh, both uh, modalities. Uh, and uh, this abstraction layer actually um, uh, is uh, capable to efficiently orchestrate uh, both and big data workloads and partitions targeted at uh, specific uh, um, resources of uh, the test beds. From uh, the data perspective and the uh, automated uh, machine learning uh, pipelines, um, some key uh, topics uh, we are uh, um, pursuing uh, uh, are coming from uh, automated uh, design and configuration uh, of uh, data analytic machine learning pipelines uh, uh, through the experiment composer, which is uh, the core tool um, which abstracts the design and the deployment of uh, machine learning uh, applications. Um, a collection of uh, a data layer uh, covering uh, distributed storage, uh, uh, improvement of uh, data quality through cleaning, uh, um, anonymization for the cases uh, requiring uh, to anonymize data, uh, data prov uh, provenance and uh, policy um, enforcement, um, uh, semantic uh, enrichment and uh, querying uh, capabilities. And uh, I, at the end, for uh, all these uh, services on top, uh, the, uh, we have deployed uh, some advanced security mechanism in order to provide uh, the means to access the different test bed uh, uh, um, in a seamless uh, way, independently from uh, what the provider could be. Um, from the perspective of uh, the demonstrators, uh, um, uh, combining uh, all these uh, technological uh, aspects, um, uh, the, the requirement is actually uh, to uh, bridge the time-consuming and data-hungry simulations uh, coming from their uh, domain uh, that need to be benchmarked over the test bench for performance uh, assessment, especially for the climate uh, change, uh, weather predictions and uh, mathematical complex mathematical models um, predicting uh, uh, weather conditions uh, with uh, high accuracy. Um, is, uh, this is what uh, is needed and um, uh, can be achieved through uh, time-consuming uh, simulations. Another aspect is that uh, added value services um, um, uh, need to be um, uh, deployed for food safety, uh, exploiting deep learning algorithms uh, at the Sibele context. Um, Georeferenced map services exploiting both HPC and uh, big data capabilities, uh, especially for uh, the services requiring maps and overlaying uh, uh, diverse and multiple uh, layers. 
and uh, in many cases, uh, in most of the cases, uh, requirements for uh, uh, robust predictive analytics uh, assisting at uh, different scales and at different uh, levels from weather to food uh, to um, uh, operational planning to resources observation. Uh, assisting stakeholders uh, um, uh, draw their decision well in advance. And uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Stephen, for, for the presentation. So uh, I have a question related to, it's, it's related to the, also the presentation, the previous presentation. So it's about the data quality. So I suppose that in your project you have plenty of data that is monitored and in real time, but uh, you, have, you, you have talked about data curation, data cleaning, data enrichment. Can you provide some example of this kind of process in, in, in this project related to this data quality increase? Yeah, correct. Uh, actually, this could be seen as a diverse activity because there are data that are being collected uh, from sensors and uh, which experience uh, communication errors or uh, losses. Uh, so uh, when data are uh, numerical, a kind of uh, improvement of their quality through data cleaning is performed in order to eliminate uh, missing values, null mm -hmm. values, or make a kind of interpolation between uh, a sequential uh, values in order to overcome um, this kind of uh, loss. Uh, from uh, uh, data coming from the food safety domain, as um, some crawling uh, services uh, have been established, uh, we need actually to tackle some kind of uh, um, uh, improvement of uh, the semantic uh, and the contextual information coming from uh, uh, this data, which are references uh, referring to food uh, that uh, needs to be removed from uh, the market. Uh, so, uh, overall, depending on the nature and the kind of uh, the data, uh, the data cleaning mechanisms are applied accordingly in order to either uh, eliminate uh, uh, some values, either uh, substitute some values with uh, median values, let's say, or uh, improve um, uh, uh, textual strings um, from uh, trailing spaces or uh, null, uh, null values, uh, contributing in, uh, in better data quality and enrichment, of course. Okay. So, well, for for the audience, if you want to make some questions, please use the the question tool of the of the webinar tool, please, because we don't have time for you know uh, that people can ask uh, on yourself. So please use the question tool in order to to provide us this question, and and we can ask the the speakers. Michael, do you have some question for them? Um, yes, I have several questions, but I, I think in the interest of time, um, we should have the next presentation and then make a break as the okay. agenda shows and then have in, in depth uh, discussions. Okay, great. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Thank, thank you, Stephen. And now okay, we can thank you. thank you. We can move to the next presentation of the Lessis uh, project. So uh, the speakers are Jan Martinovic. Mar Lebrier and Stefan ha Stefan Hackinger. So I think that Jan is going to present. So thank you, Jan. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is. Ah, I have to somehow. One moment. How I can hide? Yeah. Yes, you. Wait yeah. for. For the screen. Martinovich, okay. Yeah, can you see me? Yeah, yeah. we can. Martinovich, I'm from uh, IT for Innovation, National Supercomputing Center in the Czech Republic. And together with me, mainly for the panel discussion, is here Mark, Mark Levrier from Atos and Stepa, Stepan Hackinger. Now I will present uh, our presentation about uh, Lexis projects. Uh, Lexis is acronym for Life Scale Execution for Industry and Society. 
Okay. Lexis is uh, ICT 11A uh, project. Uh, IT for Innovations is coordinating this project. We have 16 partners from uh, seven countries and uh, project length is 60, 36 uh, months. Our main target is to build an advanced engineering platform at the confluence of high performance computing cloud and big data, which leverage large scale geographically distributed uh, resources. This uh, development, uh, development of this platform is uh, based on the integration of several existing and extended uh, software, software layers. One is for data management solution, which is based on uh, UDAP uh, software stack and IROTS. We are developing advanced distributed uh, orchestration solution uh, based on the Tetosca standard and uh, Atos York solution for orchestration. And very important for us is also work with uh, with data and uh, the connection between uh, data centers and uh, HPC part of the data, data center and cloud partition. For this, we have between these two to infrastructure special data nodes with FPGA and with uh, burst buffer technology. And uh, federation of the system is another topic together with support for industry and SMEs by accounting and billing. Our consortium has uh, 16 partners and uh, the topic of our work is uh, divided to the pilots and these pilots provided requirements for the platform which we are developing. The platform is based on the HPC and cloud resources and uh, on the current uh, HPC system which we have on IT for innovation it's tier one infrastructure and on LRZ which has tier zero infrastructures. These two infrastructures are mainly research but also for active for every support for industry and we have uh, also in the in the consortium operational supercomputing cluster from uh, ECMWF. It, this is mainly about data, data providing. The pilots are divided to three categories. The first one is about weather and climate. Here, the, this pilot is led by CIMA partners are ECMWF, NUMTECH and ITACA. Then we have pilots about earthquakes and tsunami. This pilot is led by SEA, AVI and GSZ. And uh, the very important uh, pilots for us is pilots uh, from uh, big industry, Avio, Avio Aero, it's aeronautics pilots, and uh, this industry provides to us a big set of the challenges and requirements for developing our platform. Our work on the platform is divided between several partners, the Supercomputing Center Plus partners, as Lynx Foundation, which is responsible for co-design of our platform, architecture requirements, architecture development, and so on. It's also based on the Atos expertise. Then we have securities expert from uh, Outpost 24. We have experts for uh, accounting and billing as a company Cyclops. We have experts about IoT and uh, agent uh, small hardware from Tezeo and Bancor Labs, which uh, our expert is uh, for you know, training activities and so on and uh, very important for, for, for our impact and uh, exploitation. The very important is also that we, don't, we have three pilots in the, in the projects, but we decided during the proposal preparations that we would like to validate our platform also based on the another, another cases. So in the Lexis projects, we will have an open call, which will be announced at the end of uh, quarter two of this year. And uh, then we will start with uh, work with applicants mainly from September or October of this year. Our main objectives is, as I, as I mentioned, create, creation of distributed HPC infrastructure for big data analytics solutions. Our objectives based on the requirements from pilots, and uh, by validation of the platform by this pilot, then we will work on HPDA and uh, on the provisioning of our, our solution. And uh, here we, will we are developing uh, Lexis portal for easy access to, to, the, to our system. 
So our large scale pilots, we have three pilots, as I already mentioned. And now on the next slides, I would like to present to you our motivation for work. So challenges which uh, are which we have in the in the projects. In, from the earthquake and tsunami large scale pilot, we have the main challenges about event driven automatized execution of urgent computing complex workflow. Here, for example, one, one requirement is to be deadline to have deadline dependent simulation. So in this urgent computing case, it is important to start simulations as soon as possible. For this, select the appropriate infrastructures and not only one because sometimes we know that the waiting time for from the queue can be longer can be long and so on so it is better to distribute this uh, these requirements to multiple center and then the first re available results provide to the customer so you can see that in the workflows which, which uh, we are orchestrating we are starting this event then we are going to some uh, fast uh, simulation together with the more concrete simulation then the results are provided to the to the customer here the the user of the results is uh, itaka and uh, itaka work uh, by hand with uh, with the results and can execute another another workflow or download another data from the lexis platform if needed the second pilot's challenges uh, are mainly about combination of cloud and hpc uh, infrastructure and for running a set of the simulations we are starting with a high resolution hpc re regional weather model and then we need to output from this model are using uh, use it in uh, application simulations for for more precise uh, calculation but on the smaller region for this uh, it's a big challenge to manage the data so we are working with uh, two distributed data management solutions one is provided for curated data mainly from uh, ecmwf it's a, it is a weather and climate data api and then we are developing our own uh, lexis solution based on the irox system for distributed data management with uh, with specialized uh, apis the last and very important pilot for us is more classical HPC oriented pilot about aeronautics uh, about aeronautics so me, it means that inside we have uh, CFD simulations C, CA simulations so we are working uh, on the transferring the CPU codes to more more precise GPU accelerated course codes but also we have a platform or federate, federated platform uh, requirements one is how to work with long-term computational jobs and how to orchestrate them in point of view some uh, failures for example so we are working here with uh, with snapshotting with transferring the data from one center to another if something happened on the one center to achieve the customer sla and to deliver the result of computation as soon as possible maybe not from one center but from a multiple center if it is needed the user of uh, this system here are not hpc specialist specialist we already deployed uh, hpc codes on our system but it can be uh, some engineer without knowledge of hpc so the easy access to the platform easy way how to execute the so complex workflow is very important it is why we're developing uh, lexis web portal together with uh, easy access to accelerated uh, visualization of uh, simulated result so user don't need to download the data to to to, to, or the, to, to his desktop but uh, through the portal portal he will be able to visualize the result of the computation this was the main set of the of the challenges provided to us uh, by pilot and based on this we have more generalized challenges and I would like to recap it here. We have uh, dynamic data ever and complex workflow orchestration challenge. We think that it is a very important topic uh, how to integrate together both cloud and HPC resources resources in one locality, but also how to work with the federation of uh, of HPC systems. Then the important is also data sharing again between cloud and HPC in one locality, but also important challenge for us is how to work with cross-site data management together with uh, data 
power together with uh, metadata management. Another challenge for us is to harmonize orchestration across data center with their own AI system. So we are not developing here some new new uh, new system for AI. We are using existing Keyclock solution together with uh, connection and mapping the users to the local AI system on the HPC center. And we would like to be able also to connect to another another federa AI federation if it will be needed. We are open for extension, and this is also the challenge: how to extend the platform for another identities. For the SME and industry, we for us is challenge providing access to HPC big data resources for execution execution of the complex workflow. For, to help them to execute the workflow, we are developing web portal and uh, interfaces also for a remote remote machine to machine execution of the workflow. And important challenges: seamless integration of remote visual visualization services. Where we are in the now we are in the middle of the project. The first version of our architecture of our architecture is ready. We have the first version of uh, DDI based on the IROT system. We have uh, the Weather Data Climb API. We connected together LRZ Supercomputing Center with uh, IT for Innovations. Inside the ten centers, we already deployed uh, burst, uh, uh, data nodes, uh, and we are ready for installation burst buffer solution and to work with data transfer between HPC part of the center and cloud part. On IT4i, we install and deploy new 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 open stack uh, new open stack uh, infrastructure, and uh, from the data data layer point of view what we have and uh, what we will provide to the customers at the end is distributed data infrastructure with uh, metadata handling the fair principle is very important for us based on this ddi data discovery will be available data transfer monitoring and billing uh, api in the from the portal as i was already mentioned from the lexis portal will be available for the user for uploading the data workflow execution and visualization of uh, of the result together with uh, accounting and billing uh, billing possibilities so monitoring system here is divided to two parts one one part is uh, monitoring uh, whole infrastructure as a well, whole uh, from the security point of view from the management operation point of view but monitoring system is also important for uh, providing uh, billing information to, 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 to the customers. On this slide, I would like to demonstrate where we are from the orchestration service point of view. We are developing orchestration service. Inside this orchestration service, we are using Atlas Alliant for Cloud Software for defining uh, the workflows. Then for the execution of the workflow on the different uh, HPC infrastructure, we are using special IT for innovation, HIPIS uh, middleware for HPC as a service. And this, uh, this middleware provides to us a possibility to map the Lexis account, which are more generous with uh, some uh, partially personalized users account on the HPC centers. And also by the, this uh, middleware, we have, uh, we have one way how to communicate, for example, with Slurm and with uh, PBS schedulers. So both these uh, schedulers are currently supported by in the Lexis platform. And uh, together with York from Atos, we, have, uh, we are providing support for OpenStack. On this last slide, I would like to present to you what we think that can be the future challenges after, after the, maybe the Lexis. It means that uh, we are developing a platform ready for HPC, big data, and uh, cloud. But we, we know that it will be very important to provide the connection also to edge computing and uh, to IoT devices and for new type of the hardware in the future. Automated data analytics workflows over multiple HPC center, we think that it is still more and more important. And not only for the cases which we have in the, in the Lexis, but 
extend it to AI, as was presented, as was presented in previous uh, presentations. Uh, AI is uh, also very important, and we are open to integrate inside the Lexis platform AI specialized workflows. Handling uh, and sharing data uh, of large uh, data sets, another very important uh, topic, also from the point of view of uh, data reusability in industry and scientific uh, big data applications. The support for SME, and not only what we are doing, but also for AI computing, but also for long-term data storage. We think that is important and uh, data, data set safety, security, and distributed uh, co computing. Because our platform will support, we would like to support industry in uh, our platform. So data security is a key for us. Currently, we have uh, sent two centers in the projects. One have ISO 27.1. The second, second one was tested by one of the, but Avio Aero, if they are compliant to save the data, all was okay. So the security, we think that also it's a very important topic for the, for the future. So it was my presentation. Thank you, Jan. Thanks for the presentation. So, uh, well, I have a question for you, but uh, it could be also a question for all of the speakers, because and in this way, we can move to the first panel discussion and, and we can do something more interactive for all of us. So um, you have presented nice infrastructures combining HPC with data resources, all of you, all of the speakers, but tailored to specific domains um, and pilots. If we talk about the future in five, 10 years, do you think that there will be a real convergence between SPC, AI, and big data, or, or this will be tailored to a specific solutions like now? From uh, Lexi's point of view, we hope that uh, we, we can support more than only our pilots. It is why we will have an open call in, uh, in the projects and uh, we will test uh, our platform with, uh, with uh, another, another sectors. For example, we are now under discussion with uh, pharmaceutical researchers to support workflows from pharmacy. So I think that uh, it's, if the platform will be developed uh, more open, it will be possible to support another, another domains. And we are trying to do it in the internet. This question is also directed to the rest of the speakers of, of our project, so you can you can come in, John. This is uh, Sofia uh, from uh, the Sibele context. Uh, I see that this is the trend that uh, within the three to five next years, uh, all these technologies um, will converge uh, uh, independently from the infrastructure. So infrastructure will be provided uh, in a seamless uh, uh, way as a means of uh, resources and. Um, complex uh, uh, algorithms uh, will be able to be uh, trained and uh, onboarded, uh, uh, deployed and executed uh, over the uh, um, exposed uh, resources. I think that uh, uh, this is independent from uh, the agriculture of, or the industrial uh, um, implications, uh, but uh, it's something that uh, we meet uh, in the near future. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, this is Monica from Deep Health. Yes, to mention that we the project is focused on Deep Health by the idea of, of for example, the library is a toolkit, is that it can be used uh, beyond the sector. We are validating in the health sector, but it's our aim that it's also useful in other applications. Okay. So, well, um... We are going to start. So now we have the first panel discussion. We, I have a question from people from the audience, from Evangelia Marquidu. Thanks, Evangelia. So uh, she mentions that while Lessis cl clearly makes the case for HPC, this seems to be less the case for Cybel and for the health project. Uh, so the presentation for both, for Cybel and even more for Digital, did not make the necessity of HPC clear. So do you actually need HPC 
is so what are the HPC challenges? So this is a question uh, directed to to Cybel project and Deep Health project. Uh, this is Sofia from uh, Sibele. Actually, uh, I mentioned that the necessity uh, from the HPC uh, perspective uh, arises uh, for the time consuming and the data hungry simulations. So, provided that uh, we've uh, resolved the, the uh, parallelization and the distribution of uh, tasks, uh, also simulations, uh, especially from the respective uh, agricultural uh, domain, uh, remains uh, open. So, uh, bridging uh, uh, the distribution and the parallelization of the task also for the simulation uh, will bring a clear uh, value and uh, reduce the time required uh, uh, to conduct an end-to-end -end, uh, experiment for their case. Uh, can I add something related to the field? Yes. Uh, Sorry, I apologize because if I don't uh, show uh, a real necessity, a real need from HPC, but in fact, in our project, uh, we have uh, a really need of uh, improvement. Improvement, not also. We need HPC because I think that uh, we are, if we are working with uh, a large data set with, for instance, uh, more than 100,000 images, not not too large images, maybe 500 uh, uh, rows and high, high, uh, 500 columns, and making transformation for performing data augmentation on the fly because data augmentation is generated how to say it is generated uh, randomly. So each image at at each epoch of the training process can be no will be modified differently. Okay. And when we are working with such an amount of images, with such large uh, size of images, HPC is crucial so for us. Maybe uh, we can, we, I didn't highlight it during my presentation because thanks to the availability of the look of premises on high performance computing and uh, Barcelona Supercomputing Center in premises, which are available for us for testing in the project, Maybe we have enough capacity for performing some of the experiments, okay? But that's why maybe I don't, I didn't highlight this. Sorry, but uh, it for us is crucial, of course. Okay. So well, and now I'm going to move to the two other projects, and finally we have, in order to also to to include these people, because the first question for sure is for all of them, and maybe they can answer after the presentation. So. Maybe we can now present the IO Twins project and then the Infinite Edge project, and then we can continue with this um, panel discussion. Okay. So, um, uh, so now, uh, please, Paolo Bellavista and Francesco Milo, uh, they are the, the speakers of, of IO Twins. So, please, can you present? Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I'm uh, Paolo Bellavista from the University of Bologna. So first of all, uh, thanks a lot to the BDVA for the organization and to Marianne Michael for inviting us uh, for this presentation. Um, so I am Paolo Bellavista from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Bologna. I work uh, in the area of uh, edge cloud computing middleware. Uh, and I am the scientific coordinator of this uh, project. Uh, also, uh, is uh, online Francesco Millo, who is the industrial and uh, general coordinator of the project. Uh, so here, hi everybody. You can see Francesco. And uh, basically, I'm going to also because uh, of the lack of time. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to do the presentation. And uh, then, of course, we will be both present for uh, the panel discussion. So let's go directly to the presentation. And uh, uh, about the project, uh, you, you know, OK, it's a, a project approved and funded in the ICT 11B uh, call. 
uh, we are basically at the very end of month eight of the project so we are uh, yeah a, a bit uh, late if compared with the first session of presentations uh, the project is uh, coordinated by an industry that is Bonfiglioli Riduttori based in Italy and as I mentioned to you uh, Francesco Millo is the coordinator of the project so to be very very uh, short uh, let me take the control okay uh, to be very short and to focus only on the primary elements of the project, uh, basically the uh, primary message is that uh, in IO Twins uh, we are trying to build a platform capable of lowering the barriers for SMEs to enter all the potential and all the benefits that are possible for um, manufacturing companies uh, by um, adopting um, big data analytics, AI services, and uh, edge cloud continuum kind of components in their processes. Uh, we are trying to do that in order to uh, demonstrate the value of this kind of solutions and to apply these solutions in a large variety of pilots. Actually, the project includes uh, 12 pilots in which the solutions uh, are going to be uh, demonstrated. These uh, pilots are split in three big areas that are called uh, in the project the manufacturing area, but also facility management area and uh, uh, an element that I would like to highlight in the following slides, uh, uh, sort of replicability area in order to show how these solutions can be applied even uh, beyond the borders of uh, the IO Twins project in itself. But uh, to be very rapid because of the briefness of time, of the short time available to each of us, I have prepared, we have prepared a set of slides with richer information than what I'm going to describe to you uh, today, also to, uh, let me say, um, stimulate the discussion for the panel at the end. The highlight the points uh, to, to highlight and the specific characteristics of the of the project are in very short the idea that we want to uh, build a platform uh, reach of services that can be available for the involved company partners but also uh, to be opened up to a larger community of uh, companies and not only this platform uh, will have uh, and is going to have uh, three primary characteristics. First of all, to give easy access to heterogeneous kind of server-side resources available for uh, HPC uh, and the cloud in a hybrid way. And this was, for example, a concept that has already been illustrated in the uh, previous presentations, for example, by Lexis. Uh, in addition to that, the other two uh, original points, uh, at, at least uh, if compared with the previous presentations, are the fact that on the one end, uh, on our platform, we will uh, make available uh, basic AI services uh, for machine learning, but also for integrated uh, physical simulation and online offline optimization in order to provide this uh, access to these services with the lower barriers, especially for SMEs that uh, have difficulty in having internally uh, all the uh, competencies and the resources needed uh, to uh, perform this type of uh, uh, functions, uh, of research functions internally. And the other on the other end, the other uh, important element in terms of uh, uh, originality is that we want to exploit at best the so-called uh, uh, cloud continuum. So a specific objective of the project is to put together these things in a distributed way with the uh, uh, involvement of uh, uh, edge nodes uh, uh, for uh, 
mechanisms that are distributed uh, on the uh, more traditional cloud and HPC uh, resources that are geographically distant, but also on edge nodes. And of course, this requires novel tools and novel mechanisms for orchestration. Uh, to, to give you a pictorial view of what we are trying to do, uh, this uh, picture shows you how uh, we are trying, for example, to uh, have machine learning applied to industrial plants with the idea of having this machine learning and the distributed control distributed among cloud resources, HPC resources, and edge nodes that are of differentiated types. First of all, uh, industrial gateways, but also uh, general purpose servers within the premises of the industries, the companies that are involved. I like this picture to uh, describe the concept of distributed uh, cloud co uh, continuum components that we are using in the picture, but uh, even more, I like the following ones. So if you want to uh, grasp a message, uh, a very concise message about the IO Twins project from this very short presentation, this is the uh, slide to remember. What we have the ambition to do in the project is to try to define a common methodology that we can apply to the different pilots of the project in order to uh, organize distributed digital twins capable of operating sometimes very close to the data sources, sometimes at uh, uh, border servers close to industrial pan plants, sometimes directly at the edge uh, nodes of the network infrastructures and finally uh, by exploiting the data center resources that we have in the uh, HPC and the cloud resources offered by the partners. By the way, in the um, project we largely exploit, especially for model fitting and physical simulations, the uh, large HPC resources offered as a cloud by our partners uh, that are, uh, these resources are heterogeneous in nature and we try to offer a unified way in order to access to them. In particular, the resources are offered by the Chineca infrastructure, uh, by the INFN infrastructure, both in Italy and by the supercomputing center in Barcelona. These ideas are applied to very differentiated pilots in the project. The first area, probably the most important one in terms of uh, sometimes uh, challenging requirements is manufacturing and it's a sort of flagship for the project. We have four uh, pilots for manufacturing that are described in this uh, slide. Manufacturing is for us very, very relevant because it has already demonstrated in the first months of the project that it generates very challenging requirements in terms of latency constraints, reliability constraints, and also protection, privacy of private data about the manufacturing processes. And these requirements are very important uh, for our solution in order to enable the, the platform that we are going to provide within uh, IO Twins. But the ambition of the project is not to be limited to the uh, manufacturing kind of uh, sector. And so we have decided to include also three pilots uh, that are in the, under the big umbrella of uh, uh, facility management optimization. This includes, uh, for example, the optimization of the download and the upload uh, of public of attendance in uh, sports stadiums, uh, but also uh, energy optimization in uh, supercomputer facility management. That is, we use the 
uh, HPC resources and the IO Twins platforms for optimizing the same resources that we use within uh, the, the solution and uh, also smart grid. But uh, if you want to uh, keep another message from this presentation, the other point that I like most of the project is the idea that we have five pilots uh, that are uh, dedicated to demonstrate that what we have done in the other pilots, in the other seven pilots, can be uh, replicated in these uh, five additional pilots that have similar requirements but with different scale. So these pilots uh, are going to be uh, considered in the second part of the project actually, so we are not yet working on them, and uh, they have the specific aim to demonstrate the replicability and scalability of our IO Twins solutions, so that uh, if we are able to demonstrate the replicability here uh, with the good probability, uh, what is in the IO Twins platform will be applicable also for other domains and uh, for other kind of scales. And this is uh, partially related to what we were saying during the last part of the Lexis presentation a few minutes ago. Okay, these are the partners, so large project, but it's uh, useless to, to remember that. In the last part of the presentation, we have tried to put together uh, some uh, uh, highlighted points about the challenges and also some messages for the future as uh, it was suggested by the uh, workshop organizers. So, uh, very rapidly, what we are learning from the execution of the project is that uh, uh, the key topics especially in the uh, consideration of the industry partners that we are working with, the key topics of the project are, on the one end, the capability of opening up the uh, potential, of disclosing the potential of big data analytics and the AI techniques uh, also to the manufacturing company. These manufacturing companies in the moment uh, are very, very interested in to open, evolving themselves towards the world of services and to new business models. So for them, it's very important to adopt these techniques. Sometimes there are barriers to adopt these techniques because they also because they come from other kind of application domain. In addition to this very general kind of uh, key topic and challenge, uh, the uh, second element that has appeared as a key topic is that there is the need to realize solutions for the cloud continuum that are proper for the manufacturing domain. And proper means that are really able to uh, support the claims that uh, in the literature they are uh, assumed to be able to support, such as, for example, latency reduction or scalability improvements, but really by being able to respect strict constraints on uh, service level agreements and so on. Those service level agreements with which the um, manufacturing kind of sector is able to comply with and uh, used to comply with. A very important aspect in this perspective is that uh, the adoption of edge cloud computing solutions and so the adoption of the cloud continuum middleware can enable a lot uh, better privacy and raw data ownership by enabling uh, processing of data that is very close to the premises of the industry and this is very very appreciated. Finally, third element uh, is that there is the need, but this is very uh, common to all AI kind of areas, to uh, be able to exploit AI techniques that are more distributed than uh, nowadays and more explainable. Only with this kind of uh, 
key topics considered central, uh, we will be able to adopt uh, really in real industrial environments, uh, uh, AI techniques for distributed classification, anomaly detection, and so on. In the following slides, I've reported also uh, some uh, finer kind of uh, key topics and challenges that we are uh, addressing within the IU Twins project. Uh, some of them are short term, such as the one indicated here, but we have already uh, I have already mentioned that uh, uh, needs for curated data that is. Uh, not, not, not always the case, as it was already outlined in previous pre presentations. Uh, need of investments, uh, because we need more infrastructure in many companies at the server side, at the edge side, but also at the communication infrastructure side. But probably I, it's a, uh, I should concentrate my last minute uh, by underlining the last concept that is about future challenges and that is that even if uh, in the academy we are discussing about cloud continuum uh, since a few years ago there is the need to make it uh, an industrial reality yet so there is the need for more interoperability uh, there is the need for uh, more advanced orchestration solutions for this cloud continuum and there is also the business need to generate trust around the, the idea of this EU-based cloud continuum. Very last message, one of the lessons learned from these first eight months of project execution is that very often in some industrial context, uh, we have uh, something that are more similar to small data than to big data, that is, large amounts of data but not so big as we are used to have in a uh, big data kind of uh, uh, ecosystems uh, anyway with the big potential value of information if we are able to uh, build ecosystems coalitions of small industries uh, that are uh, willing to uh, work together in order to put together data that can help uh, the ecosystem. And uh, let me close with one example. For example, some of the industries that are um, involved in the project uh, have uh, uh, large ecosystems of small companies providing, for example, uh, personalized uh, pieces of equipment printed with uh, 3D printing technologies and the act additive uh, manufacturing and uh, these uh, uh, providers are so small that uh, they do not have enough information in order to do some uh, uh, daily kind of important decisions such as for example the which is the most correct provider of uh, a 3d powder uh, for their uh, additive machines but by putting together the data sets and working together on commonly uh, agreed kind of objectives this is possible to uh, be achieved so uh, one of the future opportunity is uh, in our opinion being able to extract value also from small data uh, by uh, facilitating the emerging uh, of communities uh, uh, for specialization, national or EU districts. And that could be a very, very uh, important challenge for uh, the sector and for the EU, because for example, in manufacturing, it is clear to all of the companies that uh, uh, we are in contact with that uh, if uh, nothing happens in the adoption of big data and uh, AI techniques, uh, the uh, obvious result will be loss of competitiveness and loss of centrality of the EU in this sector. So uh, in the slides, you have also some detailed uh, impacts that uh, we are trying to achieve within uh, the IO Twins project, but uh, uh, I can leave this for further discussion or uh, for uh, personal reading uh, by the uh, by the audience. So thanks for 
the attention and uh, of course we will continue to, to talk. Thank you, Paolo. Um, for question to the to the rest of the project, IO Twins and Infinite Edge. So um, the question was related to uh, the use of HPC in your project. So it's clear that the big data artificial intelligence in IoT is present in your project, but uh, Paolo, Ernesto, you you have solved the problems. Why HPC is relevant, important in, in these projects and, and what do you think that are the main challenges for HPC? Okay, maybe I can start while uh, Ernesto is trying to uh, solve the, the, the issues, the, the audio issues is up. Yes, well, for the IO Twins pro uh, project, uh, the um, exploitation, the capability to exploit at best uh, the HPC resources is uh, crucial because uh, uh, in the project uh, we uh, are developing uh, distributed digital twins uh, whose most complex part uh, uh, runs on HPC resources and exploits uh, sometimes quite sophisticated physical simulation models. And uh, these physical simulation models require really uh, a lot of uh, computing and memory resources and also an elastic capability to assign uh, computing storage and uh, memory resources dynamically. So it is very important to have uh, HPC resources on the one hand because uh, the, the, the burst of request can be very large. But at the same time, it's important to have a, a sort of a, a elastic availability of that. So, uh, so to be able to respond uh, to requests only uh, when they are really needed and uh, the, the, the load can be very heterogeneous. Uh, this, uh, from the technical point of view, is uh, partly challenging in IO Twins because we want to put together HPC resources uh, uh, that uh, uh, typically are offered with uh, uh, heterogeneous kind of APIs and uh, a way to access them. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, uh, experienced that uh, uh, the resources offered by the Cineca uh, Supercomputing Center in Italy is quite different from the more uh, cloud-oriented resources offered by other partners, for example, INFN. And uh, so being able to do that is still a technical challenge, at least for making it uh, easy to be used by SMEs. The second uh, big technical challenge in integrating them for us is uh, to put this together with the possibility to exploit also distributed uh, computing and storage resources at edge nodes. And also this kind of interface between uh, the HPC resources and uh, what is run, uh, executed at runtime at edge nodes uh, is not uh, completely easy to be, uh, to, to be done. Thank you, Paolo. So, uh, Ernest, uh, Ernest? Yeah, yeah, Ar yeah. yeah. Okay. again, we are dealing with the project, uh, with, let's say, huge amount of data. So this is a big data and AI project. And, and again, to process uh, uh, big data, um, computing uh, is necessary, especially when it comes to analytics. So you have seen that the general idea from the pilot is to uh, um, is, is to manage the, the infrastructure uh, on prem, on the prem of the uh, financial institution uh, uh, in, inside because of the privacy of the data, they don't want to disclose it. So most of the, uh, most of the uh, computation cannot be outsourced elsewhere than the bank. So this is a challenge for the banks uh, and they will, uh, the project will try to uh, uh, leverage the solution in order that there will be standard solution that the uh, financial uh, institution can uh, adopt in solving their problems. So this is key, but uh, uh, it should be also uh, manage uh, how to distribute this computational because most of the time can be at the edge in, in some IoT uh, frame uh, pilot. Uh, uh, the computing uh, could be also at the uh, very edge uh, and not ingesting uh, 
uh, all the uh, IoT data inside the platform, which cannot handle basically. Uh, the the uh, financial institutions are talking about petabytes, which is uh, uh, manageable uh, by many sides if you keep uh, them concentrated. So the uh, computing will be put at the edge whenever it's possible, but it's central to a, a, a set of uh, standard solution in order to uh, leverage, uh, uh, say, uh, the framework to solve many problems. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ernesto. Thank so, you. The, to all the people, also a, a question from Evangelia that it is interesting. It, it could be interesting to hear from all the projects how industry is engaged and also interested in using the M services. Can you comment on that? All of you try to be precise because we don't have a lot of time. So, thank you. Yeah, from the D Health project. Uh, it's it's very clear. Industry is is engaged since they are providing, uh, and this is for example our case, industrial uh, platforms and biomedical applications where we are integrating the libraries. So to make uh, to exploit this knowledge to put it to the market, uh, and also since the, there is industry working on developing uh, specific um, solutions such as the front end. Based on based on the libraries, so industry is uh, and directly connected to the health sector. Also serving the health sector is directly involved uh, to make it uh, to exploit the open access results of the project. John, I don't know if you want to add something more. Uh, just uh, the the role of co-design, which is also designing a specific hardware, based it based on FPGAs, in order to be tested in the in the in the project. Okay. Is one of the most important developments because it's developed here in Europe. Interesting, the co-design concept, sure. Yeah, Intel Axis, if I can say, uh, we, we involve industry very much and uh, it is also why we are preparing the special web portal with accounting and billing support because we think that uh, one thing is uh, provide the resources but another by easy way for SMEs and company and uh, also the way how to build the user resources is important. So it is why we are concentrating also on this topic. Okay. Paolo? Sorry, I it. was... Yeah, I was muted. <laughs> Sorry. Um, in the IO Twins project, uh, well, uh, it's very industry driven. First of all, uh, most partners are industries. Uh, the coordinator is an industry. And uh, but most important of, uh, of all is the fact that the industry are very involved in giving us the specifications uh, and the requirements that is the uh, phase that we have just finished within the project but also in giving us uh, their uh, partial solutions that they have so in the project we are basically working a lot on integrating their solution and on trying to find a common methodology to be able to exploit uh, the uh, possibility to interoperate between the different uh, solutions. So we are not starting from zero. Uh, several of the partners have already uh, good uh, methodologies and good partial solutions for uh, uh, their kind of AI application to their manufacturing kind of processes. But what they lack most is the capability to uh, integrate with the HPC resources on the one hand and with the uh, uh, novel methodologies and novel mechanisms that uh, are undergoing uh, uh, from the point of view of development at edge nodes. So we are uh, trying to do, go to do together a sort of step forward. The other last important point that I would like, like to highlight is that uh, we try to uh, involve a lot uh, also additional SMEs uh, that are not directly partners of the project, but uh, that are in the ecosystems of the big companies that are in the project. Because uh, uh, this is true in several areas of the manufacturing domain, uh, big industries are strong uh, as far as uh, their uh, uh, small SMEs providing them with subcomponents are, are strong. And so we are trying to involve them in the process. 
Thank you. Uh, very simply, uh, the Infinitech project would have no sense without, uh, of course, the uh, support of the stakeholders. Stakeholders are, are central in the project. The project is built around them, not not uh, aside. They are central, providing uh, their own knowledge and their, their infrastructure, of course, for the for the pilot. Uh, and is around them. First, is, is a bottom-up process uh, and not the other way around. So at the bottom, there are the problems and the industries and the, of course the financial and, and insurance company and the project is built around them. But out of them, so the pilots are central to the project, the stakeholders are central, the customers are central, but out of them in a process of uh, um, finding out the levers and the solution common in building basic blocks uh, uh, we'll uh, build uh, this Infinitech framework uh, that I, I didn't mention, but uh, the most important outcome will not be the realization of some use cases, of course. So this is important because it's the ground, but it, it will uh, provide a solution. We will build a, a, a marketplace uh, built for customers and built also for the uh, data scientists involved in, in the sectors. They will bring their own knowledge to the marketplace, which will be open, of course, to stakeholders uh, and, uh, uh, and the partners of the project. Um, there will be a stakeholder alliance, which will be part of the project. So again, it's central that we will have uh, not only in the project, but uh, creating this ecosystem of the, fi of the financial sector, uh, I, I would say for the first time, uh, in this framework uh, together to build a solution out of this funding uh, of the project. So uh, it is very important and, uh, and we will see in the next uh, months uh, the development uh, of the most important milestones of the project. Thank you. Thank you. So, Sophia, maybe you want to comment? No? Okay. Uh, Michael, did you have some questions or because you mentioned that you have some doubts some questions for yes so well i have several questions but i think uh, given the time let me make a few um, observations and then also issue a few questions and we can see if we can answer them here or maybe in a, in a different meeting so in front of on my desk i've now built up two two um buckets basically so i put lexus uh, io twins and infinitech uh, in into one bucket and the other two projects, Cibel and the Deep Health, in, into a different one. So the first one is uh, the first bucket. The three projects are focusing on uh, the infrastructure, um, providing services to different um, communities. Um, they have pilots, which I think is a very good uh, idea to really test out uh, the validity of the proposal. And the other um, bucket is very much working with a specific, on specific problems in agriculture and in health, um, dealing with an audience, um, I think that is hard to deal with, um, digitalization and, uh, and agriculture, for instance, I think are two things that are a little hard to get together. Um, the challenges are obvious uh, and also in the uh, health area, we talked about uh, the problems getting uh, data from doctors. So I think uh, going forward and thinking maybe about the future of um, R&D in this area, uh, <clears throat> all projects have issued or stated that security is, uh, is an issue. Um, personalized data and getting data um, that is cleaned up, that is, um, um serving the needs but also being uh, in a legal perspective okay uh is is an issue so i think future projects um maybe we should um solicit that um, participants from cyber security organizations and companies and and research areas should be added the the other um, observation is when we talk about hpc here uh, i think um, we talk about HPC in two different aspects. One is the traditional use of HPC supercomputers. We see that Gineca is used, BSC is used. Um, 
in order to to let's say run complex mathematical models and and do um simulation and an optimization the other new use of um hpc centers is to do um machine learning so uh, because of their architecture um low latency communication and uh, the accelerators their big machines can be useful in doing quick and and big um deep learning and machine learning exercises so i think when we talk about hpc in the future it can serve both uh, both needs and it's still and it's still um <clears throat> useful um especially if we combine hpc and cloud infrastructures that seems to be another theme that i see here in three projects um where basically the use of clouds and hpc is more or less a seamless um let's say um uh is it, the the distinction is not visible to the user it should be one entity uh with two components specialized for special needs so i think that is a theme that is going on in the future um and another area i think um that would be interesting for the two projects cbel and deep health is um uh, it, it looks like um, a lot of, let's m maybe to help here a little bit, um, uh, we should be seeing whether um, formats like, uh, you know, this uh, webinar can be used in order to attract end users and to uh, disseminate um, these projects more so that maybe doctors and, and agricultural organizations can be interested um, in, in the uh, projects and um, thus helping the projects. Uh, and mm. one last comment, um, maybe one project can learn from the other. So for instance, I wanna see Lexis here and um, which one was it now? Uh, I, I think it was Sibel. Um, so, um, so Sibel said, well, and uh, we need to understand how to make HPC more usable, more user friendly, yeah. Um, and uh, Lexus has uh, is working on exactly that topic. So maybe um, you know one project can um, interact with another one to share um, ideas and to share uh, experiences and maybe to help each other. That's Maria. What I am thinking right now. So thank you very much, Michael, for a very interesting uh, observation. I think that I agree with all of them. And um, well, it's unfortunately that we don't have plenty of time. We are run out of time. And I think that I have plenty of, of questions for all of you. So maybe we can try to see if it's interesting to, to make another edition of this. And we can maybe discuss more you know, with all of us about all these open questions that we have, uh, I if, suppose. If I, if I may add something, because uh, previously there yes, was sure. the question, so, so just two minutes, because previously there was the question, uh, I, uh, IoT, big data, and machine learning, AI will converge in some way. In my opinion, uh, probably yes, but in a, let's say, in a modular way. So we will look for a specialized module that will do that task very uh, specifically in order to solve a specific problem. However, they can, can be combined. So they will not converge into a monolith, most probably. There will uh, be a different uh, uh, solution that modularly will solve a, a different kind of problem. So I see a lot of similarities between uh, the Infinitech project, which is very modular in the uh, concept, uh, with other projects that will develop, probably will develop uh, the same things uh, many times. However, there should be a way in order that uh, uh, some module that deals with data or uh, uh, IPC uh, will uh, be uh, similar and exploiting, I'm not saying everything, but the most uh, uh, common things like uh, data model, for instance, uh, uh, or uh, or um, uh, uh, IO uh, throughput and this sort of thing. So a modular will be better than a, a monolithic uh, 
application that will do everything. One size does not fit all, basically. That's my opinion. I fully agree. Yeah, it's, it makes sense. So, well, I don't know if, I suppose that we are now out of time. So, um, Anna, do you, so maybe we, maybe, we can... maybe I can also add a word, yeah. this is Stefan. Stefan Haringer from Lexis. So um, I think uh, there is plenty of um, collaboration possibilities and maybe we can continue this session also with a focus on actual um, uh, data infrastructure collaboration. So the Lexis is trying to um, collaborate with EUDAT and so on. And, um, oh, sorry, I have to open. And we have, uh, therefore, I think ample um, possibilities for collaboration there on a European level for sharing data and for managing data as well. Yeah. This could be really interesting for, for people because in the end, the lack of data is one of the issues that all of us would have. So thank you. Thank you for, for your comment. Yeah. So Maria, what I propose, this is Anna, uh, really just yes, we, we are over time and I know uh, some people have to, to, some of the speakers yeah. have to leave. So I, I think we, we should organize a, a follow-up workshop uh, immediately, uh, at least among, among the projects, uh, as now they know each other, they can go more in depth in some of the, of the topics and also discuss among us uh, whether we want to make it, uh, you know, an open workshop like this time or not, or to have a follow-up open workshop also in the close future. So if, if you agree, Maria, we can uh, maybe close the session today and um, I'm thinking that follow-up. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think, perfect. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Michael. And thanks to all of, to all of the speakers and, of course, the audience also. So... Anna, Misha, all of you for possibility to present and we will be happy to continue with, uh, with uh, this type of uh, workshop and uh, discussion with uh, another project. Thank you very much and uh, yeah, I, I share Maria with all the thanks. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> have a good afternoon and, and then we will, we will set up a follow-up workshop uh, right away. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.